Hello, you folks. So, John, when are you going to redo that music? Actually, it's funny that you mentioned that, Andrew. That's happening in the next week or two. I'm very excited about it. It's a, it's a good thing. We just did a... Uh, we have to redo the intro for multiple reasons, and the outro, too. And uh, I've, the music, I... Here's a little insider track for you right here. I pay $15 a month for the royalties, um, basically for uh, the music, for the intro and the outro and any other music that I use on the show, the bumper music and everything else. That's 15 bucks a month. It's business expense. And why well, want to get rid of it? <laughs> That's 15 bucks, man. 15 bucks is 15 bucks. And I can play music. I can write it. So we're doing our own custom intro and outro for the new ones coming up here very soon. There you go. You're first to hear. Well, hey, great. I was, I was hoping you would do something ABBA so that we could just really move to it. Jesus Christ, what the... <laughs> <laughs> I was Bee Gees. I mean, you're a Bee Gees. Well, you can tell by the way I walk up, I'm a lonely man. Can we do something like that? Maybe, I don't know. I mean... Yeah, there you go. We could at least dance to it. <laughs> exactly. Hello, everyone. I mean, um, we we, we it's have gotta, a... It's got to be music you can shake your groove thing to. I'm not sure that I have a groove thing, Andrew. I've not, I've not noticed it recently. I shower often. I've never. <laughs> you have to Maybe. ask your wife if you have a groove thing. I'm gonna have to ask her. Where, where do I wash? Where do I wash for my groove thing? Um, we we have a a new release. This came out today, right? Is that what we're working on today? Yeah. Uh, Fireman's Rescue. I'm gonna show everybody what this is here. Now, is that is that Kevin Sorbo? Is that how did you manage to get him for the cover? I didn't. It looks just like it. it's amazing. Um, Reese Dante. Well, actually, to tell you the truth, I have to give you this one. Okay. The little story behind the story. That cover is like four different things. It's a guy's body and a guy's head. Uh, well, yeah, I assumed so. It didn't look anything different to me. No, what I'm saying is it's a different guy's body and a different guy's head. Yeah, yeah. They they comped them together. I like the body and I like the face, so we put them together. <laughs> Isn't that isn't that like dream dream life for? I mean, is that how that works? Yeah. Like, you know, we'll, yep. We'll, well, Mr. Potato. And then, and then we added some of the fireman stuff, and then we added the background. So you're seeing bits and pieces of a whole bunch of pictures there that all got put together. <laughs> that's that's pretty awesome. Uh, and plus, we we love. So it's cool. sort of like, so the guy is actually sort of Frankenstein because he's he's just sort of cobbled together, and he but he's hot. Yes, yes, he is. And I, I love Reese's work, too. Reese's been out there just doing this day in and day out for years now, and she's so good. Her, her covers always look great. So um, we, we love Reese. Um, by the way, uh, everybody, uh, somebody said, love your book. This uh, What number is this? This is three in the series, two in the series, five? Two. I'm, two. I was just going to start tossing this out This is two numbers. in the series. The first one is Fireman's Carry, and then this one's Fireman's Rescue. This is better, I think, because Fireman's Carry is actually a WWF move. It's like a, a wrestling thing. It was that's I was confused by it. Well, I had a fireman once throw me over his shoulder. That was hot. Jesus Christ. Here we go again. <laughs> I mean, and it's really great when you're hanging down the back of him because you've got really good access to the backside. How does that work? I've got questions. I mean, do you have like uh like dolls that you do this with? Or I mean, how do you plan and, and is that explained? Does your back hurt still to this day because of these actions? No, because I was the one being carried. Wow. <laughs> I was I was the one that had really good access to this really good primo bit of backside. The great thing is, too, that this and, is actually considered research. It's writing research is what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, Mr. Fireman, can you put me in a fireman's carry? And, ooh, can I grab your butt? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Fireman, making people wish their house will go, get set on fire. <laughs> I'm going to read the, uh, house, I'm going to read the, the blurb Fireman, at the beginning. my house is on fire. Carry me. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Sir, that's your stove, and it's not on fire. That's just, uh, that's your, your <laughs> the burner's on. <laughs> Carry me anyway. I'm, I'm going to read the blurb here for everyone. Fireman's Rescue <clears throat> by Andrew Gray. The last and no thing... bananas. Oh my god, <laughs> I'm I'm bringing banana next time. I fucking I'm gonna maybe I can. I know where you live. I bet you I can just start shipping things out. You're gonna get a little bushel of bananas every week from Amazon to it's show up at your done. door. <laughs> it, it, am I'm I not the first? Bananas, banana games, 
I got a banana stained glass window. I mean, got... Wait, wait, wait. What? What? You have? I, you know, I think I remember that the stained. Okay, it's been a while since I've seen that. We should show the crowd again that at some point because that's been a long time since we've seen the banana stained yeah, glass window. Yeah, I'll have window. to find it. It's upstairs in the thing. But yes, I have yeah. a banana stained glass yeah, yeah, window. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> the last thing Dash Wheaton expects when his home goes up in flames is to catch his firefighter rescuer's heart. When computer security expert Dash wakes to his house on fire, he manages to escape but realizes his dog, Taffy, is still inside. Heartbroken, he watches everything he has burn, worrying about Taffy, until a firefighter hero shows up with her covered in soot. With his home gone and no place to go, Dash does his best to find shelter. Firefighter Stone Jacobs lives for his job, and his life is ordered just the way he likes it, and he has firm buttocks. So when he finds Dash sleeping in a shed, <laughs> he's as surprised. Uh, it's, it's right there. It's you're the writer, not me. So he's surprised as anyone when he offers him a place to stay. But what he really doesn't expect is the way Dash gets under his skin and into his heart. When the fire is ruled as arson, suspicion falls on Dash, making it even harder for him to move forward. Thankfully, Stone believes in his innocence and helps Dash begin to rebuild his life and business. Time together leads to white hot attraction and trust, but the truth behind the fire could separate them permanently. Bum bum bum. Oh, I don't have my sound effects up. And this one, I I tune wrote to tomorrow. everyone. He yes, actually tune in tomorrow for the next installment of as the stomach churns. <laughs> Do you remember are... that the Carol the Carol Burnett show, the recurring the, on that show in the seventies, the recurring. Soap opera bit was as the stomach churns. Dude, I loved Carol Burnett, but I do not remember that. The, it's now that was on the oh, very don't you edge the bits? of my. I I loved a lot of the bits. And, Harvey, and it was what's like, um, what was it in Canoga Falls? I don't. It was remember set in Canoga Falls. It looks like uh, as other other people in the crowd are absolutely remembering it. I get that was Carol yep. Burnett was like right on the edge of my age, you know, right on the edge, like where it was still playing sometimes, but not very often. It was definitely on reruns. Mm -hmm. uh, Charlotte said well, she didn't get the show over I, there. I remember, I remember it playing, and because my parents always watched it, and my favorite one is still "Went with the Wind." Went with the wind. It's a whole half hour long Gone with the Wind parody. It is so funny. That's a uh, dude. I, I bet you it's on YouTube. I'm gonna have to look that up. I haven't watched. I'm Carol sure Burnett it is. Years. I'm sure it's on YouTube. You have to see Went with the Wind, particularly it's Vicky Lawrence playing Prissy. Dude, and all she does for the entire it. bit is Miss Scarlet, Miss Scarlet, Miss. <laughs> Wow. She just becomes this broken record. <laughs> I'm going to have yep. to look it up. Tracy's seen it. She, she's screaming out stuff from the episode in the crowd. Um, I like how yep. at the beginning of this book, and this doesn't happen very often, by the way. I've read a lot of Andrew Gray books. I don't know. I mean, I've, I've probably, in these things too, I've read a lot of your intros, a lot more than I have your books. I'd say 20, 30, 40, somewhere in there. You actually managed to dedicate this one to your husband. I do appreciate that. <laughs> Oh, please. You bring that up every single time. I know. It's amazing. I mean, you know, the, the light of your life, the, the love of your life, you would think that you would dedicate more things to him. You know, the poor guy, he slaves away all day, I, comes I, home I, and makes I good dinner. I tried to figure it out. We're up to, he's been dedicated 120 books. I think, like he says, I can deal with it. I've got more books dedicated to me than anybody else on earth. He says, I'm fine. That's, a, <laughs> a, you know, we the crowd has not heard that. In 120, it sounds like that's such a round number. You made that number up. Just be honest. You made it. I mean, it's not like 122. There's no way it came out to 120 we know you're lying okay. Andrew. i mean i stopped john there were still a bunch of books to go and i stopped counting at 100 so i'm guessing 120 but maybe more <laughs> just dedicating other people's books to it we're going to start with chapter one here now i am uh you are dashel and i'm everybody else is that the way this is gonna work that's right all right um i'm dash every, every time i think of dashel i think mrs dash i'm are you going to do like the Mrs. Dash voice? Like Actually, the... I, de I, de I picked Dashiell because of Dashiell Hammett. That makes perfect sense to me, except I don't know who's Dashiell Hammett. I'm sorry. I'm an idiot. The Maltese Falcon, I believe, is the big is what da is the main work that everyone remembers by Dashiell Hammett. I, I I mean, you, you got to understand who you're dealing with here, all right? 
I don't know anything. I'm a blithering idiot. Um, actually, I've done two um, um, two parodies off of, of of that story, but I've never actually read the story itself. But I've been paid to do two books that were based on it. Um, that's the story of me right there. Anyways, chapter one. Here we go. Where Doris gets her oats. Chapter one. Do we say Dashel or Dashel? Dashel. Dashel. Dashel Wheaton woke up coughing and choking, his room filled with smoke. Maybe he was lucky that he woke at all. Jumping out of bed, he pulled on jeans and raced to the bedroom door, then closed it right away as more smoke poured in. What the hell did he do now? Dash knew he couldn't stay here. Glass broke elsewhere in the house, followed by what sounded like the wind. His home was on fire, and he didn't want to die in it. Dash went to the window and levered it open, grateful he was on the first floor. He squeezed out and tumbled down, crushing the overgrown bushes that had been put in years ago. Finding his feet, he hurried across the lawn as sirens sounded in the distance. Dash hoped they were for him, because his phone was inside along with everything else he owned. Patting his pockets, he came up with his wallet. Thank God, at least he had the $16 he found in it. More breaking glass shattered in the night, and he turned back to the small ranch house he rented, flames shooting out of the living room windows. The roar in his ears was almost too much. His knees buckled from under him, and he collapsed onto the wet grass, his hair matting to his head as he realized it was raining. Of course it was. Fire trucks pulled into the drive, and men immediately got to work. Sir, is there anyone else in the house? Oh, God. My dog! His throat went dry. He should have thought of her. She hadn't been in bed with him, which was strange, but maybe she'd gotten up to find something to eat. Without thinking, he was already heading back to the house. Whoa there, stay here, the fireman said firmly, but Dash raced closer. The firefighter held him back as Dash continued trying to get into what was left of the building. But she was all I had. He gave up, his knees giving way again, letting the firefighter guide him farther back. Water arced through the night sky, landing on the house. The flames hissed and growled as they fought the onslaught. Another firefighter joined the first. Is it clear, Barry? He asked in a rich baritone that Dash rarely heard. Of well, people, yes. There may be a dog inside, though, he answered. All Dash could do was watch what was left of his house and hope that Taffy was okay. He hadn't named a little dog. It was the one she'd come to him with, but Dash loved her. And she was a great companion who, unlike most people in his life, provided unconditional love. And yet Dash had left her in there. I should have found her and gotten her out, Dash said. No, getting yourself out was the best thing, Fireman Barry told him. Now can I trust you not to try to go back inside? He led Dash across the lawn to where an ambulance was parked. They got him a blanket and a place to sit out of the rain while Fireman Barry jogged away, leaving Dash alone once more. A million questions ran through his mind. He had no idea what he was going to do or where he was going to go. The house was gone, as was everything he had in the world. There might be something he could salvage, but basically there was nothing. Taffy was probably in there, either scared half to death or... He didn't want to think about that. He lowered his gaze to the shiny metal flooring and wondered what the hell he was going to do. How is your breathing? Can you take a deep breath for me? An EMT asked, and Dash did as he was asked. Your lungs sound good. Bop, 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 bop. Your lungs sound good. It looks like you didn't get too much smoke. No, I guess I was lucky. Unlike Taffy, who just got left in a burning house, guilt threatened to swamp him completely. What was he going to do without her? What are they doing? Dash asked, his gaze going to what was left of his house, now lit by lights from the fire trucks. Someone came out the front door as others hurried inside with more hoses. Dash lowered his gaze again. There was no use torturing himself. Everything he had was gone, and he would now have to figure out how to start all over again. He'd done it before. The fireman continued coming closer, and Dash saw he cradled something in his arms. He hurried right over to Dash and placed a gray-black ball into his arms. Taffy? She was covered in soot and ash. His normally cream-colored friend looked nothing like herself. 
He held her close, not even knowing if she was alive or dead. Oh, I guess that's me. We need to get her looked at right away. He pulled out a phone and made a call while Dash stroked Taffy's fur, realizing she was breathing. It's okay, we're going to get you some help, he said softly. The fireman hung up the phone. He's on the way. The same fireman who had held Dash who was ah, who had held Dash back said, I found her on the floor just outside the bedroom. She was probably trying to get back in there. She was lucky. The fire didn't reach that far. I went, ah, and I was easily able to find her and get her out. The firemen did their work, and it looked like the blaze was pretty much out by the time a dark blue truck pulled into the drive. The driver parked next to the ambulance, and Dash released Taffy into his care. What have we here? The man said gently, laying her on a mat in the bed of the pickup. It was covered, so she was out of the rain, which continued coming down. He placed a mask, probably with oxygen, over her nose. Then he bandaged some of her injuries and just held her still for a while, a hand on the side of her chest to keep her calm. She got a lot of smoke, but I think she's going to be okay. We have to give her lungs a chance to clear some of the gunk, the vet explained. Taffy tried to get up, but he soothed her back down, and Dash stood under the overhang of the truck cap door and gently petted her. You gotta get better, sweetheart. He soothed around a rough throat. He was going to cry at any second, and he knew he couldn't do that now. It had been long drilled into him that tears got you nowhere, and he'd be damned if he was going to create more of a scene for the strong firemen to talk about when they got back to the station. Dash had been called a lot of names in his life, and he knew how to put on a good front until he was alone. Let's give her a little more time, the vet said with a smile. She's doing okay. Taffy tried to get up again, her big eyes opening. Dash petted her and said soothing, gentle things. I'd like to take her back to the clinic for the night. We can watch her and get the smoke out of her system. She got a lot of it. But she's going to be okay, right? Dash was ready to climb into the back of the truck and ride with Taffy anywhere. Hell, he'd sleep on the floor of the clinic to watch over her himself if it meant she would be okay. That was all that counted right now. I think so. Oops. Oh, yes. I think so, he said with a smile, thanks to Stone here. The big firefighter with the nice eyes was named Stone. Dash almost laughed as he wondered if he had somehow been transported into a soap opera. For a second, Dash wondered why anyone's mother would name someone Stone. Was his brother Rock and his sister Pebbles? He suppressed a grin from the ridiculous turns his brain took. Okay. He agreed. But I don't know how I'm going to pay for this. He was quite literally down to his last few dollars until he got paid. The vet bills, finding some place to live. Hell, he had nothing but the jeans he was wearing. He didn't even have shoes or a shirt. Very literally, Dash had nothing at all. It's okay. So, okay. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, true. The fire department will take care of this. He smirked like it was some kind of inside joke. Then he turned back to Taffy, getting her settled in a crate from the truck before closing it up. The clinic is just up the road. Northside veterinary. I'm Dr. Gregory. You should be okay to come get her in the morning. He took Dash's information, though the address was now the burned-out shell of a house, and his cell phone was probably a lump of plastic and aluminum for all he knew. Call in the morning, okay? Dash nodded absently, and the vet got into his truck and left the scene of the disaster that Dash's life had become. Taffy would hopefully be okay. And now, he had to figure out where he was going to stay for the night. He headed for the shelter of the ambulance again. Sir, one of the other firefighters came over, his suit wet and stained black, followed by Taffy's rescuer. We believe we have the fire out. It's best if you let us finish up here. We've called the fire marshal so they can look into the cause. Okay. He answered absently, his mind numbing out. What do I do until then? He had a blanket wrapped around him and his jeans. The captain is on the phone with the Red Cross. He turned to where a man in rain gear talked on the phone. He shrugged, and Dash knew he was out of luck again. I'll see if I can find a hotel or something. There might be enough left on his credit card for a night, but he wasn't sure of that. You should call your insurance company, Stone said. They're sure to have a 24-hour number. I rent the house, he said. 
but his landlord had mentioned renter's insurance when he moved in, so he had gotten it. Thankfully, it hadn't cost much, but maybe that would save him. If only he could get his mind to process shit again and remember the name of the company. He pulled out his wallet and found the important numbers card he kept inside. Remembering things had never been a strong suit, so he had learned some time ago to write things down. Here, Stone said, handing him a phone. Go ahead and make your calls, okay? He stepped away and Dash called his landlord to explain what was going on. The yelling he got in response didn't bode well for whatever else Dash was going to have to deal with. Stone was good enough to take the phone and explain things as Dash felt his mind shutting down. It wasn't as though he had started the fire or anything. The landlord lived in Erie, so Dash wasn't going to have to put up with being yelled at in person. Stone handed him back the phone, and this time, Mr. Clausen was nicer. He said that he'd been <coughs> calling his insurance company and that Dash should do the same. His voice was clipped, but at least the yelling had stopped. Dash called his insurance company next and started a claim over the phone. He explained that he had nothing and nowhere to stay. They said that they'd process the claim and get back to him. In short, they were only minimally helpful, and he ended the call a little better off than when he'd placed it. Thank you, he told Stone, who put his phone away. Where are you going to go? Stone asked. I don't know. There's a shed out behind the house. Maybe I can stay in there for the night and figure things out in the morning. He tried not to think of the fact that he had no family, and now he had no place to live. I was going to try to stay in the shed. It was the only idea he had. Or at least, he'd be out of the rain. Thank you for coming and for saving Taffy. That was what was truly important. Stuff he could replace, but the one friend he knew he could count on was the only irreplaceable thing in the house. He stepped down out of the ambulance, grateful they'd let him keep the blanket, and headed around the side of the burned-out shell of a house. The scent of char and scorch along with the dampness from the rain hung in the air. He hurried to try to keep dry. Dash heard the firefighters packing up as he reached for the door of the shed. Without looking back, he pulled it open and stepped inside. It was mostly empty, with a few folding chairs and one of those old beach lounges with wide woven straps. He set that up and then spread the blanket over it, before stretching out, tugging the blanket over himself like a cocoon. At least he was dry for the time being. That he could be grateful for at least. Hello? A deep voice called from inside. Are you in there? Dash thought of not answering and just closing his eyes, willing this nightmare to be over and all of this to just go away. You're up. Oh, yes. Good job. Man, you nailed your line. <laughs> Tom, just got home. <laughs> yeah, here. He answered softly before the door opened. The firefighter from earlier, Stone, stood there, shadowed from behind in the light from the trucks. You're really going to stay here? He asked. Dash shrugged. I don't, I don't have much choice. The stupid insurance company isn't going to help, and I can't afford a hotel right now. Besides, it's a big festival in town. All the hotels have been booked for months, and there's nothing that isn't going to cost a fortune. Stone came inside, and Dash could see some of his features. Then you can come home with me for the night. I have a sofa that you can use. It will be more comfortable than this loungy thing, and I can try to find you something to wear. Dash was tempted to say no thank you, but his lounge, which had seen many better days, decided to give up the ghost right then and dumped him onto the floor in a heap. He rolled and bashed his hand against the floor, he stayed still until he could figure out how to get up without hitting anything else. Finally, he found his feet. Thanks. He said softly, grabbing the blanket from what was left of the lounge and pulling it around him. It's no problem. Come on, we'll ride back to the station and then I'll take you to my place. He led the way across the yard to one of the trucks. Climb on in and fasten your seatbelt. Dash did as Stone said before he and the driver climbed in, sandwiching him in the middle. He did his best to look straight ahead. Dash had no idea how these two hunky firemen would react to him taking a gander at them. Stone was just like his name, judging by the hard leg pressed against his. There was only so much room in the cab, and when the truck made a turn, Dash found himself pressed even closer to Stone. The damn, the man seemed to be hard all over. Thankfully, the ride back to the station wasn't that long, and as soon as they got there, Stone pointed out his truck, and Dash hurried over and got in the passenger seat. 
He wasn't really a big fan of parading through the fire station in little more than a blanket. He had always loved firemen. In fact, it had been difficult to hide just how hot they made him, especially in that closed cab with all that testosterone filling the air. In the truck, he pulled the blanket around him, sitting as quietly as he could, jumping slightly when the other door opened. I'm done for the day, so we can go, Stone said as he climbed in and closed the door. He had changed out of his fire gear and wore a pair of jeans and a t-shirt that stretched over his chest and arms. Okay. Dash <clears throat> kept his voice quiet and tried to disappear as much as he could. He had long found it best that when he could make it seem like he wasn't there, he could also stay out of the line of fire. And there had been plenty of that growing up. Thank you for all this. It's no big deal. They pulled out a lot, and Stone drove them through the now quiet streets of Mechanicsburg to a home in one of the developments. But it is. Dash countered. I would have had to figure out a way to sleep in the shed and then get over to the vets to get taffy. He was still trying to determine what he was going to do for transportation. His car had been in the attached garage, and Dash had no way of knowing if it survived or had burned as well. I'm stuck until the insurance company comes through. He tried not to think about it too much and turned to Stone because watching him was enough to push just about any other thought from his mind. Of course, he had no idea if Stone was interested in guys. And even if he was, it was unlikely that he'd be interested in skinny, bookish computer geeks who spent more time in their imagination than they did out in the real world. Thinking of his work, all his equipment was probably gone as well, which meant he was going to have to get everything again. And who knew how much that was going to cost or how long the insurance was going to take to pay out. All his files were backed up to the cloud, so that wasn't going to hurt him. But the hardware was expensive, and without it, he wasn't going to be able to work. There are options, and you can figure them out tomorrow. The insurance company will probably call you in the morning, and then you can get started. It should also be possible for you to go over and get anything you can from the house. I hope so. Dash said softly as Stone turned into the driveway, the garage door lifting, and then pulled inside. The overhead door closed behind them, and Dash followed Stone inside. The house was sparse and spotlessly clean, furniture and decoration minimal, but what there was seemed nice. Dash pulled the blanket closer around him and stood in the center of the kitchen, not knowing where to go. It was still the middle of the night. Come on. Stone led him upstairs into a small bedroom. It had a sofa against one wall. Let me see if I can find something for you. He left, and Dash looked around the small room. There were shelves filled with books against a wall, the sofa, and a lamp. Nothing else. The closet door stood partially open, and it seemed empty. Dash could never do that. He always seemed to fill any sort of space. Well, I have these. They may be big, but it'll give you something clean to wear. The bathroom is across the hall. Feel free to clean up if you want. I appreciate that so much, Dash said as he took the clothes, trying not to look at Stone just because he didn't want to stare. He had a high jaw and incredible eyes. The man could have been one of those models for hair care products or something. You're welcome, Stone answered gently. He opened the closet and pulled down a sheet and blanket from an upper shelf, so it wasn't empty, but nearly so. I'll see you in the morning. Stone left the room and Dash made up the sofa bed, then he slipped across the hall and used the bathroom to clean up. The clothes Stone had provided were way too big, and he cinched the sweatpants as much as he could before leaving the bathroom. Stone came out of the bedroom at the far end of the hall in a pair of shorts. And nothing else. Dash took one look and stopped. Stone was even hotter than anything Dash had imagined. Muscles for days, with a light dusting of hair across his pecs. This was a man who worked out and took good care of himself. Certainly not one who spent much of his life either behind a book or a computer screen. He stammered and turned toward the room he was using. The sweatpants fell around his legs and Dash hurriedly pulled them up, flashing stone his bare backside. Completely embarrassed, he hurried to the room and closed the door, breathing deeply while he silently... Breathing deeply while he silently berated himself for not being more careful. Still, mooning stone had been worth the view of him something he'd store away in his imagination for a very long time. Ta-da! That was chapter one. Available today. That was in, chapter one. In, uh, in apps and, and uh, it, it's out. So anyways, congratulations, Andrew. Yep. 
It's great to see you again, man. When's your next uh, big release? Next month. Ta-da. Cool. Well, we will be around next month, I'm assuming. It's, so. it's, it's April 11th. Mm. And the next month is Too Hot to Hold. Too Hot to Hold. That would be book three in yes, the Fireman my... series. Nope. Nope. This one is completely new. What? It's a Prince Charming. I've got the hero with Prince Charming, and the other character is a gay burlesque performer. Oh, my God. So I can do this voice the entire time. Oh, that's, I don't sure. know why that's a gay burlesque voice. I'm not exactly sure, but it seems to me it is. No, no, no. That's not a gay burlesque voice, but you can do whatever you want. <laughs> no, uh, no one will be happy to be that. But I appreciate yep, the freedom. It's gay burlesque. <laughs> next month is gay burlesque. Gay burlesque. Oh, what is it? April next month? What is it? Yeah, April. April is gay burlesque month here in the uh, in the John Solo Brigadier. Anyways, thank you for coming on, man. I do appreciate it. I love you to death. Uh, we will see you in a month. Enjoy. I will get this over to you so you can have it in your group soon. We'll be up on YouTube. Have fun. Wave bye to All the right. camera. All right. Thank you. Bye.